Chapter 7 Year 874 PXF Autumn Osman's body was overwhelmed with so many keel and emotions he barely had time to process them. Then, one by one, they faded into numbness. No! Osman wailed in a cry of anguish as the familiar hollow gray void in his soul swallowed every bit of emotion the painting had revealed. Even his tormented plea lost all meaning, the only evidence of it ever causing him pain receding as its echo faded in the cave's depths. Osman wept tears of frustration and a loss he could no longer feel. Racked by sobs, Osman curled in on himself into a kneeling fetal position before the painting, unable to lift his eyes. His mind's eye, having nothing to feel emotionally, logically analyzed the realities of his father's work. This was nothing like the image of the shattered stained-glass window Osman had found in Tavi's studio. While still being expertly realized by his father's talents, the painting in the studio was more a dream captured in pigment, impressionistic, leaving many details to be interpreted by the viewer. The image on the cave wall was akin to the result a wealthy patron would expect from standing for a portrait for weeks on end. The painting before Osman was the meticulous recreation of something his father had seen, or, perhaps, been shown. Osman lifted his eyes and raised on his knees to examine the painting further. It was easily a decade or more older than the few years earlier when he had been the man in the image. Tavi had to have painted it near the same time he and Alaris had crossed paths nearly twenty years ago, when Osman was just a child. A shimmering glow washed over the image before him, interrupting Osman's thoughts. He turned his head, and there was Wilfred with his weightless incorporeal hand laid on Osman's shoulder, his form casting the undulating light of the Solenfell across the cave's wall. He knew, Osman said through choked breath. Somehow, he knew the man I would become. Not the man he wanted me to be, or the man with the life I wished for. The man I am now. Osman paused in self-reflection. He saw the broken man I became, and still wanted to know me. Osman miraculously felt Wilfred squeeze his shoulder comfortingly as he said, Osman, now you are ready. Osman got to his feet shakily and had to ask, Did you know? Were you here? Nay, t'was different. His net t'was already full while yours is empty. Wilfred replied cryptically, having exhausted his ability to converse further without using the repeated phrases from his life. Osman rose to his feet and gingerly placed the tips of his fingers on the fingerprints his father had left in the paint. He hoped for some magic or emotional connection that could pierce the damage he had wrought upon himself to let him feel anything for the man who created this. But there was nothing. The injury Osman had done to himself was too grievous. Osman slowly pulled his hands away and looked at Wilfred. I know why I am here, Osman stated with a wistful smile. I am here to know my father for the man he was, not how I wanted him to be. He continued with conviction. I will finish what he started. Not for him, or Talon, or Lady Corvermain, or even the Fate Singer, but for me. Osman turned and strode from the cave with purpose. This is my journey now. Osman and Wilfred broke camp and proceeded through the pass across the shield wall spine. Before midday, they found the far side of the cut between the ridge of mountains and looked down upon the southern coast of Kaiflanor. The swath of land between the mountains and sea looked laughably narrow from this height, even though it was undoubtedly several miles wide. Coastal glaciers marked the boundary between sea and land, their jagged, icy forms locked in the deep crevices they had carved out of the towering cliffs that fell to the sea. In the narrower parts of the landscape below, the glaciers completely filled the land from the shieldwall spine to the crashing surf. In the wider areas, evergreen forests created pools of deep green nestled between the stark gray and white of the mountains formed from either ice or stone. Wilfred raised his finger and pointed to the southwest. 
Opposite Grimspire was a large teardrop-shaped plateau of land covered in birch trees shining like molten gold, their leaves having already turned with autumn's arrival. With a twinkle in his eye, Wilfred called out, There she blows! Osmond couldn't help but laugh. In his worst dwarven pirate accent, he replied, Come on, you scurvy dog! Bait your hooks and cast your lines! We've got a whale to catch! The trip down the southern side of the shield wall spine was far easier than the climb up it had been. The ebb and flow of the glaciers had ground many of the cliffs and crevices of the ridge into smooth, albeit steep, slopes. When they were able, with Wilfred's guidance, they slid down the permafrost on a makeshift toboggan made from bark and spruce branches. What had taken nearly a month to climb, the two were able to descend in less than a week. They reached a narrow open vale at the base of the shield wall spine that would lead them to the grove of golden birch trees, still several leagues away. A palpable silence permeated the liminal space the vale occupied between glacier and granite. A cathedral-like atmosphere, not due to any deity, but a reverence of nature itself. There were several hours of daylight left in which to travel, but without a word of direction uttered by either, Wilfred and Osmond began to make camp. The sense of purpose that filled Osmond energized him, but he couldn't help but feel the weight of the coming end of his travels with Wilfred. He looked across the fire at his enigmatic, extraordinary guide and friend, who had become so much more to him on this journey. Osmond didn't know if the rules that bound the Willico's existence could steal him away as early as tomorrow with their arrival at the Argestian Inception. He hoped Wilfred could stay with him and wait out the winter before he continued the journey before him. Osmond pulled the tiny painting Alaris gave him out of his pocket and looked up at Grimspire, its peak still bright with sunlight even though the shadows in the veil had grown long. The imposing mountain looked nearly identical to the tiny painting resting in his hand. Even the quality of the light was the same, as though the Bloom Sage had painted it this very evening. The few leagues of travel to the grove should make the two a perfect match. Osmond felt he had come so far since crawling out of the surf months before, but also like he had just scratched the surface of all that he needed to do. He tried to reach out with his emotions to feel something, but they were all muted or already numb. Even simple pleasures and pains were fading from his ability to experience. All his thoughts inexorably led to his father and his need to uncover who he was. With every connection, he further blunted his emotions and keel. They all had dwindled to no more than poor reflections trapped in a milky mirror. Osman had started this journey looking for knowledge, but now he wondered if the Guardian of the Inception could undo the numbness that had engulfed his soul. If it had cured Riken of the corruption that had infected his spirit, Perhaps the Guardian could also help Osman. Would he need to choose? Alaris had said the Guardian would exact a price. A month ago, Osman would have said he had very little to lose, and now it seemed like he could be gambling everything. Looking up, the Solenfell flowing above them was as spectacular as it was hypnotic. Although the gaping void in Osman's spirit had stripped it of all its wonder and majesty, he could still admire its aesthetic beauty. Is this where my father camped as well, Wilfred? Osman asked, not turning his eyes from the dazzling display in the sky. Aye, he dropped anchor hereabouts, Wilfred answered, then paused. Osman looked at his friend and found he was also looking at the sky. He had never seen Wilfred turn his eyes up to the Solenfell in all their time traveling together. The fisherman sighed and repeated the same cryptic phrase from days before. <sighs> his net was already full, so the currents pulled us each on our separate course. I don't understand, Wilfred. Is this where we part ways? What do you mean by his net was full? Osmond's head filled with questions, scenarios, and thoughts of how to coax the answer out of the Willico, even with his limited ability to communicate. Wilfred raised a calming hand. Tomorrow. It was a resigned request not to spoil this night with worries that would come with the morning. Osman held his tongue, turned his back on their small campfire, 
and sat next to his friend to spend the night looking at the eternal dance of souls across the sky of Kaiflinor. Osman and Wilfred broke camp at first light, and well before midday, they arrived at the forest of golden birches. Less than fifty yards within the tree line was a large standing stone easily visible between the slender silverbark trunks of the trees. Wilfred nodded, and they proceeded into the forest to stand before the granite monolith. Primitive carvings covered the stone, their imagery timeless and ancient. At its pinnacle, a winged serpent wrapped its sinuous form around the combined elemental symbols for air and water. Below was a procession of countless figures, some in pairs and others walking alone. Wilfred pointed to a pair depicted on the boulder. A full knit! He then pointed to a figure standing alone. An empty knit! As Osmond pondered the meaning of Wilfred's words, the Willico's expression dropped as he sighed and added, uh, A full net catches no additional fish. Osman looked to the stone, then back to Wilfred, and questioned, A choice, then? To continue alone or together? Osman looked to the stone and wondered, To go together with a full net could mean I gain nothing from the Guardian, and all of this has been meaningless. Osman contemplated his need not only for knowledge, but also a cure for his condition, and whispered aloud, To go alone could allow my empty net to gather everything I want. Osman looked to Wilfred and then to the forest ahead of him, bracing himself to say goodbye. Osman turned to Wilfred's shimmering form, so like the Solenfell above them. He wanted to remember every detail of his friend and guide, his sun and salt-wrinkled face, his scraggly beard, his ridiculous pack covered in lures, and his fishing pole waving like a flagpole above his head. Wilfred, Osmond started apologetically. Then the words caught in his throat. It wasn't emotion that choked off Osmond's words, but the fishing pole. The story of the fisherman's folly rushed into his head. Osmond realized he was about to not just let his catch rot, but toss it overboard entirely to chase something that might not even be real. Osman began again. Wilfred, will you come with me? Osman asked the question with a spreading smile and confidence in his voice. Wilfred's expression lifted, hope filling his eyes as he said, Yes. Osman led the way around the rock and looked back, waiting for Wilfred to join him. The Willico hesitated nervously, not yet breaking the imaginary barrier created by the standing stone. He looked into Osman's eyes, and Osman reassured him, Wilfred, I don't just want you to come with me. I need you. I need your guidance and wisdom, of course. But what I need most right now is a friend. Wilfred took a confident step forward, and another one, until he was fully past the stone. Osman smiled and was about to quip with one of Wilfred's maritime sayings to get them underway when he noticed the shocked expression on Wilfred's face. Wilfred, what is it? Osman asked, trying to read the cause for the Willico's distress. That is when Osman noticed the undulating illumination that normally emanated from Wilfred had become stable. It was no longer the shifting colors of the Solenfell but a light green constant glow, the color of sunlight through new leaves in the early spring. Wilfred? Osmond questioned, concern entering his voice. Wilfred opened his mouth to speak, then closed it again. He wet his lips with the tip of his tongue, then whispered tentatively, My mind is clear. He continued gently, as though coaxing a wild hare that would spook if startled. My thoughts are my own. Not just the repeated statements of my living self. Wilfred looked up to Osman, a cryptic expression spreading across his face. I don't think I'm a Willico anymore. 